Hey, algebra students, I gotta say that the most important part of this problem right here is don't panic. It's actually so much easier than it looks. Let's take a look. It says the equation 51 and one third equals one third times 20 H hmm, can be used to find the height of a pyramid with a volume of 51 and one third cubic centimeters and a base of 20 square centimeters. Solve the equation to find H, the height in centimeters. And I know a lot of students here are mad at me. Like you said, this was going to be easy. Look at this, Kate. Word problem. Geometry, letters, algebra, fractions, everything I hate. And I say, you know what, though? The only skill you need here is solving the equation. Look what it says. Solve the equation to find H. Well, there's the equation with H in it, okay? We don't even really even need to understand the rest of this thing. Now, do I want you to understand geometry? Yes. Do I want you to understand word problems? Yes. We have whole units on that if we need to. But for now, like, look, there's a equation. I'll copy it out and we'll solve it and will stop panicking and having fits when we see a word problem. Okay, that being said, now you might say, well, okay, all well and good, but you still didn't get rid of the ugly fractions. No, but remember, when you do these, when you do word problems and algebra and geometry and the GED, you get your calculator. So really the only skill you need is those alg skills. Your calculator can handle the rest, okay? Now, this guy, there's actually a couple different ways you can go, okay? But since what we've been talking about is just solving two-step equations, just getting rid of math, I think that's how I will just do this problem, okay? Again, there's other ways. If you like another way, that's fine. But what I'm seeing here is that there's H over there on the right-hand side of the equation, and there's two numbers hanging out with H, one-third and 20. And both of those numbers are doing the same thing. They're both multiplying. See how those things are all shoved together? One third is shoved up against 20, which is shoved up against H with just parentheses in between. They're all multiplying. So if I want to get rid of the 20, what do I do? I divide it. If I want to get rid of the one third, what do I do? I divide it. If you're not uh, really experienced with fractions, it might be less scary for you to do one at a time. So order is not really going to matter since they're both just multiplying. So I'll just take away the one third first and I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Now, again, this is not the only way to solve this. Okay. So if you did it a different way, finish up your problem. See if you get the same answer that I get, because the nice thing about algebra is as long as you do true things, we'll get to the same place in the end. Okay, so, but let's see what happens. So this is the gross, ugly thing you probably don't want to deal with, but the good news is your calculator can. You don't have to know how to take 51 and one third and divide by one third. You can do it in your calculator. Okay, in order to do that though, I'm going to need that U N over D function, which is in green up above the N over D button. You want something green, you need the green second button. So I'm going to hit that green second key first. It's weird to hit second first, isn't it? And then I'll hit the N over D and I should see those three little blinking boxes that look like this if I'm in the right mode, math print mode. And then I can type 51, arrow to the top of the fraction, one and three, arrow out of the fraction. So 51 and one third. And then I suggest you use the divide by button just so you don't get confused by the ugly fraction over fraction, okay? And then I wanna divide by uh, one third, and so I will just hit N over D regularly for a plain old fraction, so N over D, okay? And then I will arrow in the top to put one, and the bottom to put three, and hit enter. And I got an error, let's see what I did wrong. Oh, I didn't type the three, okay. I was like, oh no, I've taught you wrong. Nope, just fat fingered it. Okay, so 51 and one third divided by one third gives me 
154. And a lot of students then think that they did something wrong. Oh my gosh, that doesn't make sense. How'd I get a bigger number? No, it makes total sense. If you have 51 things and you break each thing into pieces, I'm dividing it into thirds. I'm going to end up with a lot of pieces, guys. I'm going to take each one of those 50 things, 51 things, and divide it into pieces. Oh my gosh, yeah, a lot of them, okay? Now, that's the left-hand side, but take a look at the right-hand side. You say, that looks ugly. Yeah, it looks ugly, but remember, multiplying by one-third and dividing by one-third cancel, so they're just gone. So what's left? Just this piece, the 20H. Now that looks a lot less scary. The hardest thing there really was knowing how to use my calculator, okay? Now, it's not solved yet, though, because, of course, H is not alone, and so I need to get rid of that 20, so H can be alone. Well, what is 20 doing? It's multiplying. So I'll do the opposite. I will divide by 20. We can do whatever we want as long as we keep the left-hand side and the right-hand side equivalent by doing the same thing. And that's going to be real nice on that right-hand side because 20 divided by 20 is just one. We just have one single solitary H all by itself. And then 154 divided by 20. What is that equal? 7.7. .7. And sometimes I scold you guys for using decimals when a fraction would be a better choice, but I'm totally chill with this decimal here because it just ends. It's just 7.7. .7. It's not... Uh, it's not, um, you know, 7.735428 where I'm just rounding arbitrarily, but it already ends by itself. It's what we call a terminating decimal. So I am cool with this answer, 7.7. .7. But I do want to address the fact that this is a word problem. So, you know, if I had just asked my question in, in the language of math, I would just answer in the language of math. There it is in the language of math. 7.7 .7 is equal to H, or the height is 7.7. .7. But since I answered in words, let's go ahead and do our answer in words. So it says solve the equation to find H, the height in centimeters. Okay, so this, this H is the height. So basically my answer here is that the height is 7.7 .7 centimeters. Nice. If you have any questions about this, post them to the Facebook group. Otherwise, happy learning.